Okay. I'm going to tread on some thin ice this evening. <laughs> I'm going in a place that most people wouldn't want to go, I think. But <clears throat> how many of you have ever heard of Daniel's 70 weeks prior to what we mentioned? Well, I'm probably going to uh, <clears throat> teach it differently than you've heard um, because I see it differently than I've ever heard it taught and I've heard it talked about for many, many, many years, and I've just never just never agreed with what I'm hearing. There's too many uh, gaps and too many uh, um, things that are being overlooked. Um, it's like you cherry-picking and making things say what you want it to say. So I feel like it's important that we just take some time and talk to you about the 70 weeks before we continue on in the Revelation because probably what you've heard is most people tie Daniel's 70 weeks to the Revelation, especially the 70th week <clears throat> to the Revelation. And so what I want to do is I want to look at Daniel chapter 9, and I want to begin reading with verse 24. <clears throat> and I want us to look at some things because they're key words and key phrases that will give us insight if we'll just pay attention, okay? And so Daniel chapter 9, <clears throat> beginning with verse 24, and, and let me preface it by saying this, the angel Gabriel has come to Daniel and the angel Gabriel is talking to Daniel and that's where we're picking up in verse 24. Seventy weeks are determined upon your people and upon your holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins. Now, you may want to underline this, to finish the transgression. Now, you understand that Daniel's in Babylonian captivity because of transgression of Judah, right? And so that hasn't completed. And then he says, and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Now these are key phrases here that will give us some insight, I believe, as we go along. Knowing, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment, now here again, pay attention to this, to restore and build Jerusalem. To restore and build Jerusalem. That's the commandment. That's the decree. Until... Uh, the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. Seven weeks and three score and two weeks. That appears to be running consecutively. Okay? The street shall be built again and the wall, even in troublous, troublous times, and here's another phrase. After three score and two weeks, Messiah will be cut off. But not for himself. And the people of the prince who shall come will destroy the city 
in the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with the flood, and unto the end of war desolations are determined. And he, that appears to be referring back to the prince who will come and destroy, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst or in the middle of the week, he shall cause the sacrifices and the oblations to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Now, I'm going to just lay this out systematically, okay? Or somewhat systematically, anyway. Daniel's 70 weeks are viewed as 490 years. It's important to understand that. Now, the belief for this seems to have its roots in Numbers chapter 14, verses 26 through 34. And I'm going to read those. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation? who murmur against me. I've heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. Say to them, as truly as I live, says the Lord, you've spoken in my ears, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all who are numbered of you, according to your whole number, from 20 years old and upward. That's something to remember, too. It's just a side thought from 20 years old and upward. This is talking about the military who have murmured against me. Doubtless you shall not come into the land concerning which I swore for you to dwell therein, except Caleb the son of Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun. But your little ones who you have said shall be a prey for them, I will bring in, and they will know the land which you've despised. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness, and your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses are wasted in the wilderness. Now here's the key. After the number of days in which you search the land, this is talking about the twelve spies that went into the promised land to search the land. They were there forty days, okay? Okay. So after the days in which you search the land, even 40 days, each day for a year shall you bear your iniquities, even 40 years, and you shall know my breach of promise. And so then each day is represented by a year. Therefore, a week would represent seven years, right? Well, Daniel's 70 weeks, we've seen, are divided into three segments, seven weeks, then 62 weeks, a score is 20. So three times 20 is 60, plus two would be 62, right? And then one week. All right, you, you follow me on in all that, okay. Then... Do we want to write that down? Excuse me? Do you want to write that down? Uh, write, the three, write the three segments. Okay. All right, right. Seven weeks. And then 62 weeks. And then one week. Now, seven weeks, if a year, a day is a year, then seven weeks would be seven times seven years, right? So you know your math? So seven times seven is 49. Very good. So we're talking about 49 years. Then 62 weeks. So what? seven times 62? 
434? Okay, then one week would be seven years, right? So what's the total of these years? You doing your math? This should total out to 490 years. which is referred to as 70 weeks. Is that simple enough? Okay. Now, according to Daniel 9.25, which we just read, from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem, until Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks, 62 weeks, which equals 69 weeks, right? And so 69 weeks, if you want to put that up here, 69 weeks times seven. I'm waiting. I'm not doing it. Oh, okay. Try 483 then. Okay. Okay. You with me? Yeah. Figured you guys would have your calculators out by now. <laughs> Andrew has anyway. Time, Andrew. You got then me. according okay. to Daniel 9.27, the prince who comes and destroys the city and sanctuary... Now listen to this, will make a prevailing covenant with many for one week. What's a week? Seven, seven years. So there is a seven-year covenant made. Now what we have to do is figure out this stuff, okay? Or try to. According to Ezra chapter 1 and verse 1, in the first year of Cyrus, the king of Persia, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus and he made a proclamation throughout all the kingdom and put it in writing. And this is what he said. Thus says Cyrus, the king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. Now listen to this. And he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Jude. So what's God charged him to build? A house. The temple. Not the city. It's important to see that, okay? And so the decree was not to rebuild Jerusalem, but to rebuild the temple. Also, this decree does not fit Daniel's timeline. This decree would actually fall short of the 483 years by at least 55 years or 53 years. There's a difference in scholars' beliefs on this, okay? In reality, it'd probably be more like 60 years if you consider the birth of the Messiah, okay? Now, another decree was given by Darius after the temple, the building of the temple was stopped. See, the Jews met opposition. Those who returned back from Babylonian captivity... were not, Ezra was not the first one to return. Remember Zerubbabel? So they returned with Zerubbabel. This is the decree of Cyrus. Okay? Then, because of all the opposition in the land, they had to stop building. Now, there were kings in between Cyrus and Darius. 
And so Ahasuerus, is, they, had to, they sent letters to the king making the Jews stop the building. Now, when Darius became king, they sent letters because Haggai and Zechariah started prophesying to the Jews and encouraged them to build the temple. And so then this opposition sent letters to Darius trying to get him to stop it. So he checked the annals and he found out that Cyrus indeed had decreed that and so then Darius made a decree that nobody had better stop the building of the temple. Not the city. And so then this couldn't have been referring to Darius because this, this decree was given like in 520 B.C. I think it was the second year of Darius's reign. And the decree was to resume the building of the temple. So this date also falls short of Daniel's timeline. Then in 456 to 457 B.C., Artaxerxes I, it's also called Artaxerxes Longamanus, sent Ezra the scribe with many other people many other Jews, to Jerusalem. They were sent during the seventh year of Artaxerxes' reign. Ezra's purpose was to teach the Jews the statutes and judgments of the law of Moses, not to build Jerusalem, not even to build a temple. So this date, also falls short of Daniel's 483 years. In the 20th year of Artaxerxes I, Nehemiah was sent to Jerusalem to rebuild the city. Now, we look at Nehemiah chapter 2. I don't want you to just take my word for it. Starting with verse 4, Then the king said to me, For what do you make requests? So I prayed to the God of heaven. And I said to the king, If it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, that you would send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's sepulchers, that I may build it. Now generally we think of Nehemiah building the walls, but we don't think of him building the city as well. He did have... The walls, it only took 52 days to build the walls. But it took years to build, to rebuild the city after all the mass destruction that it had occurred with uh, Nebuchadnezzar. And so this date is believed to be between 444 and 445 B.C., Okay. And so this date best matches Daniel's 483 years. It's believed that Jesus was 33 and a half years old. Now we know he was 30 years old when he began his ministry. We have documentation for that. It's believed his ministry continued three and a half years. That would have made him 33 and a half years old. And so if you take that um, 445, 444 B.C. and subtract that from the 483 B.C., then you would have to figure out when Jesus was born. That would make, if you do your math on it, I think that would have him being born around 5 B.C., somewhere in that, but uh, 5 A.D., I'm sorry. 5 A.D., okay? Now, just keep these things in mind, okay? 
because we're going to really get you messed up here as we go along. <laughs> Hopefully we'll help get you straightened back out too, okay? Are you with me so far? All right. Then there's still variables that must be considered when you're trying to get this timeline right, okay? Now, Daniel 9.25 says, from the time the decree is given to rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah will be 69 weeks. Daniel 9.26 says that after 69 weeks, Messiah will be cut off. And so is 25 talking about the same thing, Messiah being cut off? Or is it talking about the birth of Messiah? See, it's not clear. We're not real clear on this. And do the 69 weeks refer to the birth, the death? And if it refers to the death, is it immediately after the death? Or is it some time after that? You see how vague it is? And this is why I don't understand how people can, can get so dogmatic in their teaching. So we have to consider the dates of the reign of the kings. Now, if you would, I want you to, uh, are you, you guys ready for to erase this? Okay, if you'll erase that, I want us to put these key kings up that we're looking at, starting with Cyrus. C-Y-R-U-S. <laughs> All right, then I want us to look at Darius, D-A-R-I-U-S. And then Artaxerxes. Man. You go ahead and figure that out. A-R-T-A-X-E-X-X-E-X-E-S. There's no you? Artaxerxes 1. There's no you? Huh? Did you say R? Huh? Is that okay? Is that okay? You okay with that? There's no you? <laughs> All right, I'm going to give you some dates as we go along, okay? Artaxerxes I uh, reigned from, from, yeah, from 465 B.C., To 425 B.C. <laughs> okay? Then let me, let me go back and see if you're... Uh, I may catch it. I may catch it later on here. Okay? <laughs> and so uh, let's just look at it from, from Artaxerxes, okay? We're not... Cyrus made his decree. I think Cyrus and, and you... Well, I'll correct it if I'm wrong. I think it's 538 B.C. And then Darius, we're not uh, real certain um, of, of the rain at this point in time, okay? But the date for the return of Ezra and other Jews is solidified to be 456 to 457 B.C., that would have been under Artaxerxes. Right? So that's fitting in the time that he reigned, right? Right. Okay. Now, if we subtract 20 years from 465, put Ezra right here please. And then under that, put Nehemiah. Okay. So as we subtract 20 from 465. Okay. 445. Did you figure that one out? Maybe. 445 okay. B.C. <laughs> 445 B.C. That would solidify when Nehemiah was sent to Jerusalem to build the city because it was in the 20th year of Artaxerxes' reign.
Do you follow this, right? To rebuild, okay. to rebuild the city. Excuse me? He rebuilt the city. That's what you're telling us? In 445 B.C., he, was, he returned to rebuild the city. Yeah, to rebuild the city. Okay. Now, we know from Scripture, Luke 2, verses 41 and 42, that Jesus was 30 years old when John baptized him. Yes. And it's commonly believed that Jesus' ministry was three and a half years. So if this assumption is true, then Jesus ministered, I want you to listen to this, 1,260 days, 42 months, three and a half years. You heard those numbers before in the Revelation? The two witnesses witnessed for how long? Three and a half years or 42 months or 1,260 days. They're all the same. This is equals, okay? Now, if we add the age of Jesus' baptism uh, to his ministry, then we get 33 and a half years. Now, that's when he was crucified. That would have been when Messiah the Prince was cut off, right? Now, one major point that's often overlooked in trying to understand these dates is the difference between the lunar calendar and the solar calendar. Now, everything that I've said to you is coming off of the solar calendar. All the information I've given you is coming off of the solar calendar, right? Now, when the angel Gabriel appeared to Daniel and told him about the 70 weeks, Daniel was in Babylonian captivity and the Babylonians used the lunar calendar, which is also referred to as the Babylonian calendar. There's a significance in this. And so the time Daniel received the information was about 522 B.C. Now if now we'll go to Darius, okay? Okay. Yes, sir. Darius reigned from 522 B.C. to 486 B.C. Okay, at the time of his reign, when Daniel got the 70 weeks, they were using the Babylonian calendar or the lunar calendar. Okay, now the solar calendar evolved, went through some stages from many centuries ago, but it was adopted as the standard, or it wasn't adopted as the standard, until October 1582. Yeah. At which time, Pope Gregory the 13th introduced it as a replacement for the Julian calendar. Now, the Julian calendar was a modified version of the lunar calendar, very modified, okay? And that's what the Jews used, okay? Now, the Julian calendar added an extra day every four years to compensate for time difference of a solar Calendar. Now, here's the difference between lunar and solar. The lunar calendar was based on 12 cycles of the moon. And so they used those cycles of the moon to determine when to, when to sow, when to plant. And how, this is what your almanac is based off of. It's off of lunar. 
rather than sower. You follow me? And so the lunar calendar did not have as many days in it, the year, as the solar calendar. The solar calendar is supposedly how long it takes for the earth to rotate around the sun. You with me? Okay. Now, Pope Gregory the 13th mandated the solar calendar, pardon me, well, the, the solar calendar, but they named it the Gregorian calendar. And so the calendar that we use today is the Gregorian calendar, which is named after Pope Gregory. Anybody getting any Catholic stuff in this? It'll amaze you. If you look at history, it will amaze you. The Catholic has had their tentacles in this from the beginning. And we'll see this as we, as we go along. According to the lunar calendar, a year was 354 days based on the 12 cycles of the moon. So they would have to put in an, an intercalaria month every two to three years to try to make it come out to the solar time period, the rotation of the earth. And sometimes they would have to add days to compensate if they got behind. Actually, the Egyptians are the first one to really look into and come up with the idea of the solar calendar. Okay? But that took many years for it to come into to existence to full use. It takes 365.2422 days. You get those decimals in there? <clears throat> For the earth to rotate around the sun. Our calendar is what? 365 days and every fourth year we have a leap year to add a day to try to compensate. The truth of the matter is there is no accurate calendar, nor has there ever been an accurate calendar that fully matched the 365.2422 days. You follow me? Now, if you look at 354 days, right? 365 days. You see the discrepancy? Now, if you multiply that times hundreds of years, you can see where it would throw time period off. Mm -hmm. Now, the bottom line is, not only did we go from the Babylonian calendar, we didn't go straight from the Babylonian calendar to the Gregorian calendar, but we had the Julian calendar, calendar thrown in there in between. Just stay with me on this, Okay. And so the Babylonian calendar, the lunar calendar, is 30 days, 12 months. So just to make it match the cycles of the moon, 30 days, 12 months. And so we're going to get a discrepancy between our Gregorian calendar and the lunar calendar, okay? Now, with all these things in mind, you can see how difficult or how impossible it is to pinpoint an exact date of Jesus' birth or an exact date of Jesus' death. If we could get an exact date of either one, we could determine the other from the 33 and a half years. You follow me? But by Scripture, we cannot get those dates. But we can get a time frame. You follow me? And so, if you go by the Babylonian calendar, 
Instead of the Gregorian calendar, the years mentioned in Daniel changed from 483 to 476. You do your math on that? Section 13 is what? Three? What's that three for? 76 from 83 oh. is how much? Let me help you, seven. <laughs> okay. And so there is a seven-year difference. I don't know what those three fingers were. There's a seven-year difference, okay? Now, this time frame, uh, I just have three minutes before my session's over. Well, uh, boy, that was, that was timing, wasn't it? Yeah. I'm asking a question, and I get an answer, and she's telling me I need to get, wind this thing down. Well, let me get this in before we take our break, okay? There is a seven-year difference between the lunar calendar and the Gregorian calendar. And so this time frame would place Jesus' birth at approximately 2 B.C. instead of 5 A.D. You with me? So his death would be like at 31 A.D. Yeah. You, you follow me? Yeah. Now here again, we can't say this is accurate, but most people commonly believe that we start from 1 A.D., the birth of Jesus. Now, after the break, I'll talk about that, okay? <laughs> 